Hi, this is Bernie with National Law Docs, and today we'll be talking about the subject of small claims court, the people's court. I'm a retired trial attorney, and I'm happy to tell you what I know about the subject of maximizing your chances of winning. Now, today we'll be talking about our small claims kit called How to Win in Small Claims Court Every Time. It covers in detail over 40 subjects and examples, but in the limited time of this video, I'm going to go over only some of the more popular ones. And we will be discussing the number one recommendation of how to win a case, how to maximize your chances before the judge, is there a bad habit that will sink your case? There certainly is, and I'll tell you about that. What court should I sue in, and how do I get free small claims court information? Now let's talk about the number one recommendation, and that is telling your story with as much factual detail as possible. To a judge, remember, strong, clear facts increase believability, not speculation or opinion or sympathy, and especially not bad memory. And now I'm not talking about long-winded stories, but stating facts that directly relate to your case. Judges know that people rarely remember excruciating details unless it actually happened. Time and time again, juries have told me that they were impressed by the witnesses who had a specific recollection. So let's take that recommendation and use it. Let's use an example. This is an actual example of testimony that was very successful because details were used. Abby bought a home improvement system from a retail shop under a special sales offer. The sales rep said there would be no payments of interest for six months, uh, and she especially refused to buy one of these extended warranties they tack on for an extra fee. Sure enough, she bought it, and sure enough, the next month, she got a bill, and that warranty she didn't want was included in the billing. It was hidden somewhere in the fine print. So she went to court and, and uh, challenged them on it. And this is what she said to the judge. <clears throat> Good morning, Your Honor. I remember very well the conversation with the representative in question. We were standing over by the stereo systems, and I told him I was only willing to purchase if he could offer me the terms in their newspaper ad of no payments and interest for six months. I said it was more expensive than I had envisioned because I was on a modest salary, and so I definitely did not want to have the extended warranty. I uh, asked him if this, uh, this uh, purchase would apply to this store and this system, and I remember his reaction to this very day. He stepped up to me and faced me directly, and he had this red and blue plaid shirt and put his pen in his pocket, and he laid down the contract, and he crossed his hands like this, and he said, I'll never forget this, Mary, I've been working in this store for three years now, and I have to tell you, this is one of our best deals. I just sold a dozen of these systems on the same terms, and I can guarantee you this is what you'll be getting. Then he pulled out his pen from his pocket, and he pointed to some of the fine print in the contract. And I remember he said, here's the wording for our special offer. It looked like a lot of legal language to me, but I do remember the phrase, deferred payments. Now, the judge will say to himself or herself, there's no way she would have remembered all that much detail unless it really happened. Now, here's an example of a bad memory. Your Honor, I responded to the company's ad saying there would be no payments or interest for six months. I wasn't going to buy the system without that deal, and I asked the rep if it was true, and he said it sure was. He seemed like the honest type, and I trusted him. Well, that's fine, but that's not much detail. I mean, you got to give a lot more than that for it to work. Now, I ask you this question. Between those two forms of testimony, guess who won? Well, the one with more detail is the one that prevailed. Next, how do you act before the judge? Well, that's simple. Just leave your emotions at home. I have to tell you, folks, day after day, court after court, state after state, people get up and unleash an emotional tirade on the judge, either to make a point or for sympathy or out of frustration or anger, you name it. It is by far the biggest turnoff. 
I'm talking about yelling, accusing, insulting, finger-pointing, grimacing, rolling your eyes, smirking, glaring. You get the idea. Any overt showing of emotion can really sink your case. The more neutral and objective you are, the more professional you appear, the more respect you get from the judge, and the better chance of winning. The best way of preventing emotions from seeping in, in is to prepare your statement or script in writing and memorize it. That's what, that's what lawyers do. We, we rehearse over and over again, and that kind of takes away the emotional tint of your testimony. Let's take an actual example. Again, this is something that happened when someone called in and told us about this, this story. Uh, John answered a for sale ad for a Ford station wagon, and in the process of looking at the car, he noticed a sound coming from underneath which sounded like a muffler noise. And he asked what it was, and the defendant said, oh, that's nothing. There's a couple of small pin-sized holes that you can either ignore or fix yourself. No big deal. Well, John bought it, and uh, on the first weekend, he took his son to a soccer match. Uh, he noticed his son was kind of out of it during the match. And on the way home, they figured out what was happening. Exhaust fumes were coming out of the muffler and made both of them sick. A large hole had been camouflaged by a do-it-yourself patch, and the patch had fallen off. Well, anyway, the son uh, was treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. Now, you can imagine how emotional this would be to the average person. But you don't want to drag this into the courtroom. Simply be factual. This is how John should not have testified. <clears throat> Good morning, Your Honor. I can't believe the story I'm about to tell you, which has affected myself, my family, and especially the health of my son. I met the defendant looking over at him with a negative glare. In November of 2011, when I purchased his station wagon, he must have thought I was a real fool because he told me the only problem was a small hole in the muffler. Well, he really pulled a fast one on us because there was a large hole in the muffler and he had attempted to conceal it by a homemade patch which fell off in a couple of days. To show how callous he was to me and my family, this caused... Blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. But you might say, that's all well and good, Bernie, but if you're sitting in court and, and uh, you have someone that's uh, making a false statement or uh, making malicious statements or just flat wrong, I mean, how can you stay calm? Folks, you just have to do it. It's part of the game. But here's the good part. If there are emotions flying around the room, let your adversary be the one who gets steamed up. Judges love the person who is the more, most professional. It's actually a good thing that your adversary wants to rant and rave. Let them do it. Hold your temper and be the exact antithesis of that. Calm, objective, and factual. Many times this alone will win the case. I know what you're thinking. Someone has done you wrong and you want to go to court and teach them a lesson. Don't fall into this trap, folks, because all you're going to do is go there and attack your adversary, and it looks really bad. You're never going to win an argument with these, these folks. The argument you want to win is with the judge. So do what lawyers do, and that is kill them with the facts. We had a case the other day where someone had parked their car at the airport, and they turned the engine off, and they were outside and getting the luggage, and someone backs into them and hits their front bumper. Well, uh, they thought it was a, a clear-cut case until the next day the employer called and said, by the way, our evidence is that you, you uh, ran into them. <laughs> well, of course, it was ridiculous, and they were rude and hung up on the phone and, and threatened them and all kinds of things. But instead of going to court and saying, Your Honor, we were minding our own business, and this fool who didn't know what he was doing uh, backed into us, all you want to say is, Your Honor, I've listened to what they had to say, but... It's very simple. They hit us after we were lawfully parked. The employee at the time apologized, and there was never any mention at the scene of them running into us. That's all you have to say. Let me leave you with this idea. Never pay to get information about small claims court. Just call us. We'll tell you about hours and fees and how to serve and all that type of stuff, and, and it's free. Anyway, for, thanks for listening to this video, and thanks for choosing National Law